as limiting uh, their turnovers, as we say every game. Uh, it's not rocket science if we can uh, limit our turnovers, uh, get some uh, offensive rebounds and offensive rebounds uh, leading to uh, points in our favor and not letting not letting Corn City get those second chances uh, here tonight. Uh, Punxsy should be able to come away victorious here on the home court at Punxsutawney. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break, uh, about a minute. We'll come back, a little more chat, and we'll be ready to start this game. We've got about uh, three minutes on the clock before they call the teams over. The game start, first start at 7 and at 6.47, so they must be figuring on 10 minutes worth of talk before the game, evidently. Uh, usually they say seven, but anymore, you never know. They could start early. So with that being said, you're listening to a Punxsy High School playoff sports night on Fox Sports 100.9. Maybe what kind of fancy treasure chest be this? What? Oh, this is not a treasure chest. This is an ATM machine. I can access my money here or at any other ATM across the world with my in-first bank card. Yeah, and this in-first bank just become hold your gold. In-first bank holds my gold, and since I signed up to their Casasa Rewards checking account, they literally pay me to bank with them. Casasa. So you're saying that they reward you for choosing them to protect your treasure? Casasa. Exactly. In-first bank Casasa Rewards checking allows you the opportunity to earn monthly cash rewards and refunds most ATM fees nationwide. With Casasa Rewards, there's no minimum balance. Most banks charge you if your balance is below a certain amount. And there's no monthly service fee where other banks actually charge you to hold your money. Smart of you not to allow yourself to get hard swaggled by those other banks. Tell me on the map where I can find me one of these in-first banks for my gold. Just go to infirstbank.com and see the full list of locations. Let's hit the high seas to the nearest in-first bank. <laughs> Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Ready for the game? Are you sure? What you can go ahead and give me it back, Jer. I want to be able to see all the action clearly. Dr. Gribble and F. All right. You depend on your eyes. Depend on Gribble Eye Care. No referrals necessary. Get to your appointment in person or at 938-4777. Not just cataract. Get your full line of eye care at Gribble Eye Care. And eyelid and diabetic procedures, too. No need to go out of town. Find them at Funksy Hospital, second floor, suite 2500, Gribble Eye Care. This is Punxsutawney Lady Chucks Basketball, FM 100.9. Okay, welcome back to Chuck Daly Memorial Gymnasium, where the girls are out uh, going through their <clears throat> warm-ups, layups, foul shots, uh, and you have your typical girls that are out launching three-pointers from NBA zone. Uh, I guess that's part of the game. They, they feel that if they can make those long, long threes, that the shorter threes uh, are coming easier. So uh, good for them. Uh, like I said before, Punks Tawny uh, down from the 4A District 9 uh, bracket. Uh, that they have been in, which would be like Clearfield, St. Mary's, uh, those teams, down to 3A. So they got a little different scenery there, They're down with uh, Corn City, Red Bank, Monotaw. I, I don't remember all those 3A teams, but nevertheless, uh, looking to continue their, their winning ways here uh, in this 2020 season that's been... 2020-2021 season that's been uh, nothing but uh, interesting. Let's just call it that. Uh, still wearing the masks. I see a, I see a few girls uh, on, on both sides that don't have masks on. I would suppose either they are vaccinated or they have medical releases from their doctors. I know that is a, an option for, for some of the girls. Um, whether they have asthma or, or some sort of breathing problems, who knows what it is. But also for you folks out there, uh, on the we are on the radio here, 100.9 Fox Sports. We are on TribLive.com on the uh, computer devices, whatever you have, and also on the Punk Stony High School YouTube channel. So you can actually tune in and watch the game and listen to me there. It will be the same commentary, uh, but you can watch the game as I... Uh, Call the, call the place. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We'll be back for the start of the game here shortly. You're listening to a Punxsutawney High School Sports Playoff Night 
on Fox Sports 100.9. with it. Press the weight down the floor. Tosses it to Weave. Weave for three. It's going to be short. Off the iron, no good. Nice rebound by Gribble. Out to Riley Presley. Presley for three. Off left. And rebound by Manuel for Carn City. 6.34 to go. Punksy 3 nothing lead. Carn City goes baseline. And stolen away by Riley Presley. She's taking the ball down the floor. Gets it over to K9. Puts it up. And it's going to be a travel call as she had control and come off both feet there. Going to go back to Corn City. Punksy in that full court press. And they get it across to Rosie Carden. And back to Fennel. Fennel ahead. Uh, 
going to be a carry. Yep. Both referees called that carry, and that's got a carry on Rosie Carden. And Press Lloyd Riley is going to inbound that ball to Chloe Press Lloyd. And Chloe going to bring that ball up over half court. Gets it to K9. K9 looks into Caitlin Ribble. Hands it off to Chloe Press Lloyd. She drives the ball into the key. Good defense by uh, Corn City here in the early going, not uh, letting. See penetrate deep three by Presley Doe. Good off the back of the iron and rebound by Manuel. Manuel gets it over to Fennel. Fennel down low to Callahan. She backs her way in and going to be a foul and one situation going on for Abby Callahan. That foul is going to be on Caitlin Gribble. She's trying to stand her ground there as Callahan backed her way in. Going to be one shot. Live ball on a miss. And takes her dribbles before a shot. And launches it up. And it's going to be good. So Callahan completes the three-point play in a tie game. 3-3 here with 5.40 to go in the first period. Weaver brings the ball over half court. Gets it to Presley. Presley, a little shake and bake. Gets it over to Kirsten Riley. Riley looking for help. Oh, that would have been a perfect backdoor situation for Weave. And they get it into K9, and that's going to be a block by Manuel. Uh, Manuel not having that low post, uh, those low post shots here tonight. And they get it into Weaver. Weaver. Manuel, Manuel gathers that ball back up. And K9 steals it away. She brings the ball up the floor. Gets it to Riley Presley. Presley looking to drive right down the key. And it's going to be on the floor. On the floor, block call. That was Punksy's ball under their own hoop. Chloe Presley going to take that ball out. And that's the first foul on Abby Callahan. And they get it into Weaver. Weaver's, oh, nice job by Weave to drive in. Misses another layup. Uh, it's a little bit low, getting that ball up over that rim. Uh, Weave, there's a lot of body contact there, not called. I, I can't blame that all on her. She She's getting beat up on her way to the hoop there. Uh, and stolen away by Chloe Presley. Presley following the defense, getting them twisted around, and she puts it up, and it's going to be a block call. As all the Corn City girls, she was taking them. Uh, Chloe one on three there, and uh, there was no way they could get their feet set as they were backing their way down the floor. So it's going to be two shots for Chloe here. First shot is up, and good. Punksy back to a 4-3 lead with 4.23 to go here in the first period. Substitutes come in for Punksy. K-9 gets a break, as does Riley Presloid, as Danielle Gribble makes her appearance, and Maddie Shyock. Chloe with her second shot. Good. Nice job by Chloe Presloid. And score sits 5-3 with 4.23 to go. And, that, and oh, <laughs> as luck would have it. Right between uh, Caitlin Gribble, so the inbounder was trying to bounce it off her feet because uh, she was running into the five-second call. That was a carry and not called. And Danielle Gribble steps in front of the pass. She's driving left, puts it up, and it's going to... Okay, we'll just say it's going to be Corn City's ball on that uh, on the outcome of that play. Weaver gets a break as Riley Presley comes back in. And Corn City gets that ball in to Rosie McMillan and a fight for that ball. And Carden comes out of there with it, flying down the floor, being guarded by Danielle Gribble. And Carden, she is not enjoying it as she loses control and it's going to be a fight for it. Danielle Gribble going to be called a jump ball. It's going to stay Corn City's ball. Nice job by Gribble as she, uh, as she caused that uh, loose ball situation and then uh, fought for it, cut into the jump ball situation, and it's going to be Corn City's ball as Punksy had the opening tip. And Corn City gets that ball into Fennel. 3.44 to go here as Fennel loses control of it, looking for help, and she lobs it in. Nice job on the law. It's going to be a foul by Presley as she bumps into Abby Callahan on her way to the hoop. First foul on Riley. Both teams, two fouls. 
It's going to be on the floor. So it's Corn City's ball under their own hoop. I see a sub in Emma Johns in for Corn City. And that's their leading scorer coming off the bench. Uh, normally don't see too much of that as that's a zero in the game. Uh, hmm. uh, that might have been ten. My bad. And that was a zero. Nice job by Punksy feeding it into Chloe Presley for two more. I don't have zero on uh, on my, and I forgot to write her down. She was on the on the master list. I need to look back at my picture here and get her on the uh, scorebook. So, final with that ball, top of the key, extended, being guarded by Chloe, and they get it to 22, which is Abby Callahan into, and that's gonna be a walk, and she can't believe it. She got every bit of her two steps. Emma Daly is zero. Emma Daly. My bad on that. I try to keep the starters at the top because usually that's where I got to uh, put most of the points in at. Weave tries to put it in the layup there. It's going to be a jump ball. Saves Punksy's ball. Nice job by Shyock on that rebound. It just got tied up there. So Punksy's sitting in the 7-3 lead at the moment. And Gribble gets that ball into Weaver. Weaver, little lob up and in. First two points by Sarah Weaver. Nice little feed in there from Danielle Gribble on the inbounds pass. <coughs> right in front of the hoop to Sarah Weaver, excuse me. Great, Danielle Gribble with nice defense there. She had the right idea, just, just, missed, uh, just missed that steal there. And Kirsten Riley gonna take the helm top of the key, guarding Fennel. They get it over to Callahan. Callahan into Johns, no good. And coming out of there with the ball with Danielle Gribble. Nice crossover. She blows by Johns. Gets it across to Riley Presloyd. Presloyd drives into the key. A little floater off the backboard. No good. And Carn City up with it. And that's going to be a double dribble. As she dribbled that ball to gain control. Stopped. Uh, must have kind of Sort of forgot about it Pick, as she put her dribble up and started dribbling again. So, turnover, Punksy. Riley Presley going to inbounds that ball. Weaver flies across the floor, gets it, and she looks to drive into the key and piss, passes it out to Riley Presley. Presley surveying the scene. Punksy leads 9 3 with 1.49 to go. Riley Presley gets it down to Daniel Gribble. I would uh, bet money she was going to head fake it and drive that ball. Shyock with the ball on the right wing. Looks inside, bounces it to Weaver. Weaver looks inside, looking for somebody to go to. She drives down the key, little floater, and it's good. And one situation for Sarah Weaver. She draws a foul as she treats the key. And... That foul going to be on Callahan. That's her second foul. Uh, substitutes coming in for Punksy. Caitlin Gribble for Maddie Shyock. And Chloe back in for Danielle Gribble. Substitute for Corn City. I believe that was... I saw the young lady coming in there, but I don't see her number. Her hair's down over it. That is Julia Andressi. And the foul shot was good by Weave. So Punksy still playing the full court defense here. And ball brought up by McMillan. McMillan, uh, that was almost a double dribble or a carry, one or the other. And she into the lane, fires it up, no good. And it's going to be rebounded by a culmination there. It was sort of Caitlin Gribble and Kirsten Riley. Uh, nice try by Weave, just a little bit late on that pass. And it's going to be stolen away by Kirsten Riley. Nice job by... And they're like dominoes going down. Two Punksy players on, down on the floor. And that's going to be a walk on Rossi McMillan. Punksy ball. A little fight for the ball on the far side of the floor there. And, and uh, Weaver and Chloe Presley ended up on the floor. Chloe came up a little bit uh, tender on her, on her left leg. But I think she's going to be all right just to... Stinger, and Danielle Gribble drives it. Nice job as Kirsten Riley lays it in for two. Good job by Danielle Gribble finding Kirsten Riley as the defense uh, 
went to guard uh, Danielle Gribble. They went to double her, and Kirsten Riley was wide open, and she lays it in for two. Corn City having some issues with the Punxsy defense. Uh, nevertheless, as the score sits 14-3, to we're down to 15 seconds to go in the first period. And that ball knocked away. It's going to stay Punk or uh, Corn City's ball. 11 seconds to go here. And it's going to be Julia Andressi going to take that ball out. And it's going to be inbounded to number 13, Allison Fennell. Fennell across to McMillan. McMillan looks inside. She's down into the corner to Andressi. And she fires it up. No good. And that's going to end it. Your first period comes to a close 14 to 3 in favor of Punxsy. We'll be back here for the start of the second period momentarily. You're listening to a Punxsy Tony High School Playoff Sports Night on Fox Sports 100.9. <laughs> This is Punxsutawney Lady Chucks Basketball, FM 100.9. Okay, welcome back here to Punxsutawney Chuck Daily Memorial Gymnasium where the score sits 14 to 3 in favor of Punxsy here after one period. Uh, Punxy defense, nothing short of uh, uh, just, uh, I don't know how I want to explain that, just uh, pretty stout defense here tonight, uh, opening the game for Punxy. Uh, only giving up three points in that first quarter, uh, several turnovers. I'm 100% sure that the Corn City girls, are, are they're not having fun here tonight trying to get that ball in and... Uh, also trying to bring it up the floor as they Punxsy has not come out of their full court defense and man to man uh, defense this whole game so with that being said Corn City does get the ball in and a little give and go there as as Corn City tries to back their way in <laughs> Punxsy just doing a great job and both girls end up on the floor as Johns and Weaver <laughs> Uh, we're both uh, vying for possession there. It's going to be Punxsy's ball by virtue of the possession arrow. As Corn City got it on the opening of the second quarter. So Punxsy with that ball. They get it over to Riley Presley on the right wing. She fires up a three. Off the iron. No good. And Weaver dives on the floor. I love to see that. Not afraid to get on the floor after the ball. Great job by Sarah Weaver. Unfortunately, it's, it's Corn City ball as Punxsy just got the last possession. So with that being said, Johns is going to inbound that ball to McMillan. McMillan ahead. And it's going to be off of Sarah Weaver. A close play there as both girls were sort of in midair uh, after that ball as Callahan and, and Weaver were both uh, going for the ball. And Corn City A get that ball into Cardin. Cardin, a little spin move on Riley Presloyd, and she gets the ball across half four. Five court. Uh, it's going to be a block call on Riley Presloyd. Is I think it, it should have been pretty much a it should have been a no call in my eyes as Callahan sort of just turned and dribbled right into right into Riley Presloyd. So. A little bit of half and half as far as uh, as far as fouls go there, but anyways, Riley picks up her second. She finds herself a spot to catch her breath as Shyock comes in for her. Nice switch by Punksy there on that defense. That's going to be a push off on Callahan. So Touche and she has three fouls, and she's going to find herself a seat, uh, catch her breath as. Number 13 comes back in for Corn City, Allison Fennell. Oh, Punxsy with the ball, a little push off there. Uh, Freeze, uh, 
Getting a little whistle happy, uh, to say the least. I didn't think that was much of a foul there on, on, on Corn City, and that's going to be the second one on, on Rosie Carden. And they get the ball. A nice give and go there is Shyock. Oh, it's going to be a foul called. Shyock goes down on the play. She, a beautiful give and go by uh, Punksy there. And Shyock going to go to the line. 4 2 shots. First foul on Rosie or Rossi McMillan. I should have verified that. I'm, I'm guessing it's Rossi. Could be Rosie. I, I'm going to guess it's Rossi McMillan as they have a. Rosie Carden to for shot and good by Shyock and the second one good again nice job by Shyock she makes both free throws and they get that ball in looking for help and they're not gaining much ground there and nice try as Shyock just uh, on Johns's hip, she's going to pick up her first foul. A little block call there, pushing. Johns is going to be inbound in that ball for Carn City. Score sits 16 to three, and they lob it in there to Fennel. Fennel being guarded by Danielle Gribble, and she's not having fun. I keep saying that. You can see these girls are just. And timeout, Corn City, first one of the game. We'll take one with the teams. You're listening to a Punk Stoney High School Sports Line on Fox Sports 100.9. You know, some people just don't care for their eyes as well as they should. But the fact of the matter is, your eyes are one of your most precious gifts. Why take chances with your eyesight? Gribble Eye Care can give you a whole new view of the world. Professional eye examination, cataract surgery, and a great selection of glasses and contacts. Gribble Eye Care is your family's total vision center. Use your head on your eye. Depend on Gribble Eye Care. Call 938-4777 for an appointment. Gribble Eye Care. You're listening to Punxsutawney Lady Chucks Playoff Basketball on Fox Sports Punxy, FM 100.9. Okay, welcome back here to Punxsutawney Area High School, where the score sits 16 to three in favor of Punxsy after a Corn City timeout. Uh, they were backed into the corner there, and they get the ball in as Johns gets it into Carden, or that's Fennel, my bad, and that ball knocked away. Shyock guarding Fennel at the moment, and a lob into Carden. Carden lays it in. Oh, a ball! How did it not go in and out? And there's going to be a foul called on a third attempt. That's where we're having an issue. That was a third rebound on offense. And that's going to be Shyock's second foul. That was the third shot attempt for Corn City on that particular possession. We got to limit that. Someone's going to box out in there and get that rebound. And the shot's up. Off the back of the iron, no good. McMillan misses the first and the second one to come. Shyock going to get a break as Kirsten Riley comes in the game. Second shot is up and no good. And good job by Caitlin Gribble as she rebounds it, flies down the floor, gets it into Weaver and Weaver to Chloe Presloid. Presloid for three, in and out, no good. Weaver with the rebound. And she just loses her foot, and as she goes into four Carn City players, and Johns with that ball looks to drive a little 12 footer, and there we go again. And she almost got her own rebound. She realized it was partially blocked and took off running for it. It's going to be Punksy's ball on a possession arrow. Punksy just uh, a little bit lax on the rebounding side of things here. 5.30 to go here in the second period. Punksy sits with a 16-3 lead. Chloe Presloy gets to Weaver. Weaver looks to go. I thought she was going to actually pass that in there to Danielle Gribble, but decided not to. Caitlin Gribble with that ball, doing some dancing. Gets it to Weaver. Weaver around the defense. Nice job by Weave. Ah, she just misses that layup. And it's going to be a foul on Chloe Presloy. Uh, she got tangled up with Brooke Manuel. That's Chloe's first foul. <clears throat> so both teams sitting with six fouls. Sarah Weaver going to get a break. Riley Presley back in the game. Next uh, fouls will shoot one-on-one. -on -one. 
Uh, nice draw, job by Kirsten Riley to deny that inbounds pass. But it's off of her, so back to Corn City. And Emma John's going to inbound that ball, looking to get it in. Get, they do get it in, and she dribbles out of trouble. Oh! <laughs> uh, Corn City, girl, had a nice job picking it off by K9. She takes it to the hoop. A little, I thought she was going to hit the spin move, but she pulls it back out. Gribble for three. Off the iron, no good. Gets her own rebound. Takes it to the hoop. And no good on the second attempt by Gribble. So Kate, uh, Kira, Corn City with the rebound. Gets it across half court. Going to be final with that ball. Crossover Gribble being guarded by Caitlin Gribble. Nice job on the switch here by the Gribble girls. Uh, Great defensive players here for Punksy. And they get it into, uh, it's in and out of the hands. And then picked up by Riley Pressway as she goes around the defense. Puts it up, no good. And rebound Corn City. They get it ahead to Carden. Carden ahead. And she going to lay it up and in as Rossi McMillan. Punksy calls timeout. We'll just stay here. It's a 30 second timeout. Uh, I think Coach Carlson just giving the girls a chance to catch her breath. Four minutes to go here in the second period. Um, a little shot there by Rossi McMillan brings the score to 16-5 with 4.04 to go here. Uh, Punksy, like I said, just a, a little a little sluggish on their uh, defensive uh, rebounds. Uh, given... Just given Corn City those second attempts, luckily, luckily for Punksy, uh, they've only made one of those second attempts. So it's going to be Punksy's ball. Corn City making their way back to the floor as Andressi's in the game. Uh, who else is in there? We have. Uh, who all is in there for them? They have Fennel, Carden. Callahan's throwing it back. Weaver drives into the lane, puts it up off the glass, and iron no good. And also Emma Daly's in the game for Clarence City. Hey. Having a real tough time getting that ball uh, basically past the three-point line, so to speak. Nice switch by Hunksy and stolen away as Shyok comes out of there with it. And she dribbles the ball up over half court. And looks to get that ball inside and knocked away there by Andressi. And they get it to Weaver. Weaver looked, uh, looked to drive and stops. Surveys the scene. And she gets into the lane. Shyok, a nice st stop. And I thought she was going to shoot that, but she didn't. A nice job by Weaver. Gets it into Press Lloyd. And Riley Press Lloyd with her first two points of the game here with 2.58 to go. Corn City gets that ball in as McMillan with that ball. Obviously basically just playing man-to-man. -man. They're, they're uh, not really trapping that uh, full court. And they lob it in to Emma Daly, and Daly puts it in for two. Brings the score to 18-5. to Presley with that ball up over half court. 2.30 to go here in the second period. They get it to Danielle Gribble. Gribble over to Riley Presley. I thought Presley was going to take that three. Weave gets it back to Presley for three. No good. And rebound by Daly. Ahead. And I thought she was going to lob that ball ahead. Fennel was. And she doesn't give it up. And Carn City. McMillan has that ball. Bounces it to Carden. And she gets it to Fennel. Fennel at the top of the key. Uh, nice switch by Weave and Gribble. And it's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to stay. Fern City ball. They all turn around and start walking the other way, but it's their ball. And Dressy going to take it out.
Carnicidio. Ooh. Almost a backcourt call as uh, she took that ball in the air uh, off the inbounds pass. Nice job by Punksy as they get in that passing lane. Weaver with the ball coming up over half court. Gets the left wing and back to Gribble. Gribble looks inside. My headphones are giving me some issues here. And Weaver for three. Sarah Weaver brings the score to 21 7 here with a minute 14 to go. And the inbounder. Corden is screaming for help as McMillan comes down and gets the ball. Being guarded by Caitlin Gribble. And they get it across. A little push off there by McMillan. And she takes off down the right wing. Looks inside for some help. Bounces it to Carden. Carden across the floor. Nice job by Danielle Gribble as she steals it away. And nice spin, nice spin as she flies down the floor looking for some help. Gets it to her sister. Over to Weaver. Weaver, nice uh, around the defense, and she puts it in for two more points. And 32 seconds to go. Punksy sits 23. And Corn City, seven. Caitlin Gribble guarding Fennel on the way down the floor. Fennel looks inside, no help. And maybe Daly with a, a pick set. A pick and roll, and she doesn't get the pass off the roll. And they ooh, almost uh, tipped off there by Weaver. And Chloe Presley steals that ball. She's ahead of the defense as she flies in for a right hand layup. And it's going to be a foul called on number 10. Rossi McMillan, her second. So we'll shoot two on the foul on the layup. So with two seconds to go, Chloe Presley to the foul line. First shot's good. After the uh, conclusion, we'll uh, go to break. And second shot's good by Chloe Presley. So with two seconds, uh, I imagine Corn City is going to get that ball in, and that'll be about it. So score after two, 25 to seven in favor of Punxsy. We'll be back with some scorer totals uh, right after this quick break. You're listening to a Punxsutawney High School Playoff Sports Night on Fox Sports 100.9. Power matey, what kind of fancy treasure chest be this? What? Oh, this is not a treasure chest. This is an ATM machine. I can access my money here or at any other ATM across the world with my in-first bank card. Yeah, in this in-first bank you speak of, holds your gold. Well, the in-first bank holds my gold, and since I signed up for their Casasa Rewards checking account, I'm ready, account, they Jer. literally pay me to bank with them. Casasa. So you're saying that they reward you. All right. Your treasure. Kasasa. Exactly. In First Bank, Casasa Rewards Checking allows you the opportunity to earn monthly cash rewards and refunds most ATM fees nationwide. With Casasa Rewards, there's no minimum balance. Most banks charge you if your balance is below a certain amount. And there's no monthly service fee, where other banks actually charge you to hold your money. Smart of you not to allow yourself to get hard swaggled by those other banks. Tell me on the map where I can find me one of these In First Bank's former gold. Yeah, just go to InFirstBank.com and see the full list of locations. Let's hit the high seas to the nearest In First Bank. <laughs> Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. This is Punxsutawney Lady Chucks Basketball, FM 100.9. Okay, welcome back here to Punks 20 High School, where we are at halftime, and Punksy holding a 25 to 7 lead over the Garden City Lady Gremlins. The scoring totals will start with Garden City. Um, leading the way is Alibi Callahan with three points, and two each for Emma Daly and Rossi McMillan. And for Punks uh, leading the way at the moment is Sarah Weaver with 10 points, followed by Chloe Presloid with nine. And two each for Kirsten Riley, Riley Presloid, and Maddie Shyock. Foul situations, uh, two each for Riley Presloid and Maddie Shyock. One for Caitlin Gribble, one for Chloe Presloid. And for Corn City, three for Abby Callahan. And two each for Rosie Carden and Rossi McMillan. So we'll go ahead and take a break. Uh, listen to some of our sponsors. Uh, once again, uh, thank those sponsors and thank you all for listening. Uh, sound like a broken record every game, but uh, without those sponsors, uh, we're, we're not here. So uh, please support those sponsors anytime you can. Uh, 
We'll go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back for the start of the second half here in about seven and a half minutes. You're listening to a Punxsutawney High School playoff sports line on Fox Sports 100.9. I'm Rich Dennison. The House today giving final approval to President Biden's nearly $2 trillion coronavirus relief package with no Republicans voting in favor. The measure includes $1,400 stimulus checks, extends a $300 a week unemployment benefit increase, and boosts a child tax credit. Republicans insist the bill is bloated with liberal pork, bailing out poorly run state and local governments unrelated to the pandemic. Fox's Jared Halpern on Capitol Hill. The Senate today voting 70 to 30 to confirm Court of Appeals Judge Merrick Garland as Attorney General. Another major retailer is joining the fight against coronavirus. Target says more than 600 of its stores with CVS health locations will administer COVID-19 vaccinations. Target will make its fitting rooms available for vaccine appointments. Fox's Jenny Casola. America is listening to Fox News. Nya, nya, nya. Mba, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. <clears throat> the broken Bunsen burner burns so bright. South, Jenny. Southeast Asian Peninsula. Hey, Jenny. Yes, I think the only line we need from you today is drivers who switch to progressive could say pick. Cool. I just got to finish my warm ups. <clears throat> foul, foul. Throw in the towel. History, history. Switch to progressive today. Send a ski slalom in a salmon skin suit. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. If I'm not commuting anymore, where do I really want to live? Well, you handle life's questions. Moral Guided Investing helps you manage your portfolio and invest for your next move with the option to work with an advisor at a low cost to a minimum. Merrill, a Bank of America company. Visit MerrillEdge.com slash investing goals to get started today. Investing involves risk. Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Smith Incorporated, both the registered broker dealer and investment advisor, member of IPC. Investment products are not FDIC insured or not bank guaranteed to maintenance value. Have you been told you have cataracts? Is vision not as clear as it once was? Like you're looking through a dirty window. Or is it getting difficult to drive at night due to the glare around headlights? Each one of these can be scary because your sight is so precious to you. It's that very reason why your next call should be to the Laurel Eye Clinic. During cataract surgery, the Laurel Eye Clinic offers all the latest in lens technology and were recently chosen as one of only 31 centers in the entire country to offer the most innovative lens yet. Vividity. That's right. You have the option of the Vividity implant right here in your backyard. Patients have been amazed with the full range of vision following cataract surgery with Vividity. Not to mention combining Vividity and dropless cataract surgery might just be the perfect option for you. Dropless surgery and Vividity only here at the Laurel Eye Clinic. Call the Laurel Eye Clinic today, 1-800-494-2020, or go to laureleye.com to schedule your consultation. And why Laurel Eye? Because it's your eyes. The Laurel Eye Clinic, a better vision for you. Fort Brunel UPMC Hillman Cancer Care Center is available for you and your loved ones right here at the Punxsutawney Area Hospital. Our board-certified oncologist and hematologist, Dr. Kamanova and Dr. Ramanini, are part of our comprehensive team at the Punxsutawney Area Hospital that provides patients with the latest personalized cancer treatments and access to breakthrough clinical trials. New advances in cancer prevention, diagnosis, and treatment are being developed every day and brought to you close to home. You are not alone in your fight against cancer. Punxsutawney Area Hospital and Hillman Cancer Center are committed to providing you with the knowledge, inspiration, and specialty cancer care you need so you can face your diagnosis with confidence. Why travel for world-class cancer care when you don't have to? We're here for you as a part of the Punxsutawney community. Learn more about the UPMC Hillman Cancer Care Center at the Punxsutawney Area Hospital by visiting www.pah.org or call the office at 814-938-5212. At Punxsutawney Area Hospital, patients come first. Visual Impact Printing in downtown Punxsy is the place to go for all your custom design needs. Shirts and decals made specifically for you and your businesses. Visual Impact Printing wishes the Chucks good luck in tonight's game. You're watching your favorite show, and you get a text. Looks like you just bought a diamond bracelet for $5,900 in Las Vegas. Or at least someone tried to. See, you've got Card Valet from Marion Central Bank. You can turn your debit card on and off when you want. Set sending limits and receive alerts when your card is used. Download the app to your phone, register your card, and you're done. And you can get back to your show, Card Valet, only with Marion Central Bank. Member FDIC. 
We've got good news and bad news. The bad news is, because of the whole social distancing thing, there aren't too many parties these days. The good news is, you can still call Punxy Pizza and get a Punxy Party Pack and have it all to yourself. One cheap pizza with one topping, cheesy bread, and a two liter of Pepsi, only $23.49. Parties or no parties, you can still get a Punxy Pizza Party Pack for just $23.49. Call for delivery, 938-8132. 938-8132. Good luck, Chuck, from Weather Capital Sale. With all that's been happening lately, we are so grateful that you get to play and so proud of your dedication. Weather Capital Sales wishes you continued success, not only on the court, but all that you do in life. Think more, save more. More propane in Falls Creek. As your locally owned and operated propane supplier, More Propane knows the importance of community and the kids that grow up in it. We would like to wish all of the students... Okay, Jerry, you can send her back, buddy. ...basketball season. We hope you reach all your goals. You're listening to Punxsutawney Lady Chucks Playoff Basketball on Fox Sports Punxy, FM 100.9. Okay, welcome back here to Punxsutawney Area High School <clears throat> where the Lady Chucks are sitting with a 25-7 to lead here at the moment. A uh, little game recap. Punxsutawney defense, uh, nothing short of stifling here early on as... Uh, I think you can count on, uh, well, count on both hands how many actual shots that uh, Carn City has been able to get off uh, here, uh, what I would call legitimate shots. Uh, they have made a few uh, few layups, a couple foul shots here, or one foul shot on, on an end and one play. So, with that being said, hopefully uh, Punxie's game plan hasn't really changed any because if they can put up another 25-7 to 7, uh, half uh, we came out uh, victorious here tonight and like I said earlier it's going to be uh, between the Red Bank Valley Lady Bulldogs and the Monotaw uh, I should have that the Lady Warriors I thought they were the Warriors uh, Punxie will play the winner of that game so that being said it's Punxie's ball as Chloe Presloyd inbounds it to Riley Presloyd over half court Look for some help. And uh, the Corn City defense uh, stepping it up a little bit here. Riley Presloid had to, had to look a little bit there. And they get it into Kirsten Riley in the key. Back out to Riley Presloid as she uh, takes her takes her dribble, gets it into Kirsten Riley, and she lays it in for two. Nice job by Caitlin Gribble to Kirsten Riley for two. Uh, beautiful pass, uh, bounce pass down low. I think it actually surprised uh, K9 as she. As she got that ball in a low block, uncontested little bunny there from about three feet away. And Kern City with that ball out front is Carden. Carden lobs it into Manuel. Manuel being guarded by Caitlin Gribble. She nice spin move by Carden and she takes it to the hoop. Or Manuel, my fault. As she puts her first two points of the game up for Kern City. Uh, nice play there by Manuel. Is she a uh, nice spin move? Uh, as Caitlin Gribble was uh, uh, tightly guarding her. And Gribble with that ball gets it out to Chloe Presloid. Presloid looks to drive, bounces it to Riley Presloid. Nice crossover out to Weaver. Weaver for three. It's good. Sarah Weaver drains a three. And Punksy out to a 30 to 9 lead here in the third quarter with 6.33 to go. And that ball going to be picked up by Presloid. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she tries to get rid of it quick, and it's stolen away by Callahan. Callahan looks to go coast to coast, and finally Sarah Weaver puts the stop to that. Back out, and she fires up a three. Off the iron, no good. And Gribble with rebound. Gribble flies down the floor, and she's taking all the girls on. And off the iron, no good on the layup. As it was a nice, uh, I seen it in college the other night, a nice flop there by Fennel as... Uh, as Caitlin Gribble uh, 
drove past her. Uh, I've seen it happen where, you know, uh, they it, it's part of the game. I understand that. But uh, she barely bumps her, uh, you know, maybe grazes her, and they, they flop down like they were steamrolled by a D9 dozer. Uh, unfortunately, uh, no call on the play. So, uh, unfortunately, Gribble missed that. And a high off the glass, and once again, a second attempt, and once again, a third attempt, and a foul by Sarah Weaver as number 14, Rosie Corden, is going to go to the line. I think that's Weaver's first foul here tonight. Oh, it's going to be on Raleigh Presloid. Oh. Sometimes I wonder if referees uh, don't get the numbers crossed up. Weavers are looking at uh, over at Riley Presloid right now, and, and she's saying, how did you get that file? And she shrugs her shoulders like, who knows, the guy can't read numbers, I guess. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, score sits 30 to 10. First shot was good by Carden. Second shot is good. Nothing but net. Nice foul shots by Carden. 5.23 to go here. It's 30 to 11. <clears throat> yes. Chloe Presley gets that ball to Danielle Gribble. Gribble, a fake pass. Oh, nice spin move. She bounces it back out to Weaver. Weaver for three. Off the iron, no good. Rebound by Callahan. Callahan back to Fennel. Fennel goes across, not quite across. Now she's across half court. Being guarded by Chloe Presloid. And being guarded closely by... Punksy faithful here, uh, wanting that five-second call as as uh, tar, or as Fennel was dribbling that ball, dribbling that ball a lot uh, before she got by the timeline, and they push that ball ahead. A three, nothing but air for Ro Rossi McMillan. Danielle Gribble with that ball down into the key. <laughs> She got hung up there. Gets it to Chloe Presley. Presley around the defense. Puts a left-hand layup up. No good. Nice job by Kirsten Riley. And there's going to be a foul called on number 14, Rosie Carden. That's her third foul. So it's going to be Punksy ball underneath thrown hoop. And Shyock going to come in and give Kirsten Riley a break. And now a nice... Bounce pass uh, a little bit low on the uh, layup attempt by Danielle Gribble as Callahan brings the ball up over half court. And she's going to lob that. Well, I thought she was going to lob that ball. She just lobbed that ball into Manuel. Stolen away as Shyock comes out of there with it. Shyock up over half court. A wide open three attempt. She didn't want to take it. Gets the ball to Gribble. Gribble. To Weaver. Weaver right down the middle of the lane. Off the glass. Two for Sarah Weaver. And Punksy right into that full court uh, press defense. Not really full court press defense. Just full court man to man I should say. And it's been working uh, without the uh, without actually pressing. They've been getting a lot of a lot of turnovers as Punksy. And score sits 32 to 11 in favor of Punksy. Harden with that ball out front, looking for some help, and gets it to Manuel. Manuel being guarded by Shyock. She drives the ball down the lane, and stolen away by Punksy. And Chloe Presley, nice bounce pass to Gribble. Gribble lays it up and in, her first two of the game. Uh, Danielle Gribble with two. Riley Presley going to come back in, as well as Kirsten Riley. A pass up ahead, nice job by... Corn City breaking that press. They get it high in the air to Manuel. Manuel back out. And we have three. No good off the iron. Ahead to Sarah Weaver. Weaver. And she lays it up. Going to be fouled by Callahan. And that's going to be number four on Callahan. And she's thinking, dang it. Here in the third period with 2.43 to go, I'm probably going to find my seat, self a seat on the bench. And substitutes waiting to come in after the first shot by Weaver. Good. And substitutes. Riley Presloid comes in for Chloe Presloid. And Kirsten Riley comes in for Caitlin Gribble. 
Johns is back in the game for Garden City, as well as Daly. Carden. Fennel. And McMillan. McMillan takes that inbound pass right back to Johns. Johns stolen away by Weaver. Weaver takes it to the hoop, and no good. Nice job by Kirsten Raleigh, rushing back on defense, and they get it to Gribble. Gribble way across the floor to Riley Presloyd. Presloyd, going to be a charge called on Riley Presloyd. <laughs> oh, my. I guess it is what it is. Most generally, uh, defense needs to have their feet set on that play, but like I said, the flop's part of the game. As defense falls to the floor and the referee uh, has that soft heart for the uh, defense that falls to the floor. So, uh, Riley Presloid is going to be chinked with her fourth foul. Should be her third. But she uh, took one for, for Sarah Weaver there a little bit ago in the early in the third period. And Corn City lobbing that ball into Andressi. Andressi a handoff to Carden. Carden a shot. Nope, that was Carden. That was Fennel a shot. Mighty Shyok flying down the floor. Looking for some help. Gets it to Presloid. Presloid across to Gribble. Gribble down low to Kirsten Riley. Nobody is on her. And Kirsten Riley. Two more points for K9. And Hunksy sitting with a 38 to 11 lead here with a minute 32 to go here in the third period. And a handoff there. Somebody loses their mask on the floor. And going to be a blocking call on Gribble. And that's going to be Carden going to the line for Corn City. Minute 25 to go. Score sits. 38-11. It's the first foul on Danielle Gribble. And shot's good by Rosie Carden. Nice stroke on that foul shot. We were going to get a break. And Chloe Presley comes back in. And second shot's up. Same as the first. Nothing but net. Good shots by Carden. Punksy inbounds that ball to Chloe Presloy. Presloy across half court. And she gets it over to Danielle Gribble. Gribble, a little, little pass fake. Dribbles to her left, hands it off to Shyock. Shyock to Chloe Presloy. Presloy, nice job taking off the bounce to Kirsten Riley. And it's good. Kirsten Riley from close range puts up two more points. A little bounce in pass to Fennel. Fennel being guarded by Presloy. And. It's her to put the brakes on. Hands it off to Carden. Carden looking for some help. And uh, Kirsten Riley tiptoes the, the baseline as she picks that pass off. Uh, great job by Kirsten. Nice step back, too, by Presley. Bounces off the iron a couple times and no good. Woof. Uh, a little elbows flying there by Daly as she clears the ball on her rebound. 27 seconds to go here in the third period. Score sits 40 to 13 in favor of Punksy. A little push off there. And Chloe Presley gonna just reach in and grab that ball. It's gonna stay Corn City's ball. As Allison Funnel dribbled that ball down in no man's land and had no place to go. And Chloe politely reaches in there and grabs a hold of that ball and creates the jump ball situation. So Punksy's uh, next on the uh, possession arrow. And they flip the ball out to Andressi. Andressi for three, oh, no good. And Shyok pulls that ball back. Two seconds down into K9. It's good! And he counts it. Nice job by Chloe Presswood. I thought she was going to take that three from deep straight on, but pounces that ball to K9 as she unleashes it really fast and beats the clock. So Punksy sits with a 42 to 13 lead here after three. We'll go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back for start of the fourth quarter here. You're listening to a Punxsutawney High School 
Playoff Sports Night on Fox Sports 100.9. Hey everyone, Ed Yonner here from Advanced Disposal. At Advanced Disposal Services, we are driven to deliver, providing the very best in customer service while protecting our environment. At Advanced Disposal, our motto is service first, safety always. Our trucks are equipped with the latest safety technology tools. Onboard video cameras, backup cameras, and backing sensors maintain the highest degree of safety for our employees, our customers, and others we share the roads with. Our customers and our communities deserve the very best. Advanced Disposal, we are driven to deliver. This is Punxsutawney Lady Chucks Basketball, FM 100.9. Okay, welcome back here to Chuck Daly Memorial Gymnasium where Punksy's sitting with a 42-13 to 13 lead. We're getting ready to start our final eight minutes of hoops here tonight. Uh, Carn City's ball by virtue of the I thought Carn City just got that last ball whenever Chloe Presley reached in and, and I didn't realize there was another jump ball, but Nevertheless, <clears throat> Carn City's ball. Johns with that ball. Looking to do something. Dribbles in. Back out. A three. Blocked. Oh, just missed by Kirsten Riley. And we even get called for the foul there. On a shot attempt by Daly. So we were with her first foul. First shot. Good. Nice shot by Daly. Prepared for her second shot. And the second shot attempt is up. And good. And a timeout. We'll take one with the teams. You're listening to a Punks Tony High School Playoff Sports Night on Fox Sports 100.9. You're watching your favorite show, and you get a text. Looks like you just bought a diamond bracelet for $5,900 in Las Vegas. Or at least someone tried to. See, you've got Card Valet from Marion Central Bank. You can turn your debit card on and off when you want. Set sending limits and receive alerts when your card is used. Download the app to your phone, register your card, and you're done. And you can get back to your show. Card Valet, only with Marion Central Bank. Member FDIC. You're listening to Punxsutawney Lady Chucks Playoff Basketball on Fox Sports Punxy, FM 100.9. Welcome back to Punxsutawney Area High School, where Punxy's sitting with a 42-15 to lead. We have 7.30 to go in the final eight minutes of hoops. Uh, one thing I wanted to, to mention uh, for these uh, playoff games, evidently the visiting teams get... Uh, chances at tickets too because there are Corn City fans in the stands which uh, has not been the case here all season long. Uh, the most as far as fans went that I saw were a few uh, folks doing some videoing. I think they were probably uh, volunteer coaches or what have you. So anyways, uh, kind of good to see and I know the uh, the uh, whatever you want to call it, the, the limits on how many people were allowed to uh, come to the games as Sarah Weaver misses a uh, nice uh, nice pass there, uh, feed to her, and she she misses her layup, rebound by Corn City. Uh, the 15% uh, indoor limits were, I guess, up from the 10%. And me a travel call on Rosie Carden. I'm sure she thought she was uh, bumped into there by Chloe Presloid. No call. And Punksy inbounds that ball to Weaver. And Weaver patiently brings it up over half court. 6.30 to go here in the fourth period. Presloid into Riley Presloid. Kirsten Riley sitting wide open. Chloe Presloid for three. Nice job by Chloe. And she drains a three from the left wing. And Fennel brings that ball up across half court for Corn City. Looks inside. Johns being guarded by Riley Presloid. 
It'll be a five second call by the referee. Andressi not happy about the call. He's voicing his opinion to the referee, but he's not getting any satisfaction. <laughs> Punksy takes over control. Chloe Presway over to Gribble. Gribble looks to pass, looks inside. Shyock in the game here for Punksy. And gets it to Gribble. Gribble, little, little ball fake there. It gets it uh, almost stolen away as. Oh, nice job by. <laughs> nice job by Caitlin Gribble. Always looking to, uh, uh, to find those. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Find those passes through the defense, uh, just not picked up. Nice nice attempt. The outcome, uh, not what we were looking for, but down to four minutes, 55 seconds. Score sits 45-15, favor of Punksy. And they're in the set. If that wasn't, if that wasn't three seconds, I don't know uh, how many it was, but no good on the layup. Gets it down to Caitlin Icehead, fake by Caitlin Gribble, as she lays it up and in. Caitlin Gribble with two for Punksy. As there's a bunch of subs waiting to come in for Punksy on the far side. And I see the JV girls have their jerseys off here, and of course there's not a game uh, for these playoff games. Jump ball, it's gonna go Punksy's way this trip. And lots of subs coming in for Punksy as Hanley, Weaver, Riley, Kirsten Riley. Um, I need to go back to my, my notes here. Emily Dobbins comes in the game. Punksy bringing that ball up the floor. Over to... Dobbins, Dobbins to Hanley. Hanley gets it to Weaver. Weaver loses the control of it, but gets it gathered back up. Over to Kirsten Riley. Little pass and go uh, plays here by Punksy. And Dobbins gets that ball into the key. Back out to K9. And Punksy, uh, basically a lot of burning clock here as that ball stolen away. Nice lob attempt, and Weaver steals that ball back. And Gets to Kirsten Riley. Kirsten Riley steps around the defense. Out to Danielle Gribble. Gribble drains a little 15 footer. Nice job by Danielle Gribble on a feed from Kirsten Riley. Three minutes to go. Score sits 49 15. I like to see uh, Coach Carlson. Uh, I don't know if he ever listened to any of my broadcasts, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll call it a win, uh, even though I'm sure he didn't take my advice. Uh, he has a couple of those JV players in with the varsity players. Uh, he doesn't, like, uh, since all the starters are in for, for Corn City, it gives these girls uh, some playoff uh, experience, gets them on the floor during a, you know, a playoff. You always hear that, you know, even in uh, NFL and, uh, and higher-ups, you know, you've you got to lead, you know, get those younger players in there, get them some court time, you know, they're, they get comfortable in there uh, with the, and timeout by Punxsutawney. We'll go ahead and stay here. 30-second uh, timeout. And Coach Carlson uh, going to bring the rest of the JV girls in here. <coughs> Looks like. Amy Poole made her way in. Kirsten Riley. She's out. So Riley Presley comes back in. Danielle Gribble, Dobbins, Hanley, and Amy Poole. Once again, back on my soapbox here as Punksy uh, has a nice mixture of girls in here as, uh, yeah, like I said, just gets those girls some time, gets them some, some court experience. We have a foul called on Rosie McMillan. That's going to be her third as she was reaching in on Riley Presley. <coughs> and substitutes coming in for Carn City. Nice round of applause. Nice hard-fought game by those girls. Their coaches both 
up and uh, giving them uh, high fives on their way out. Punks the inbounds at ball. Daniel Gribble ground the top of the key. And Riley Prezoid looking to get it to Maeve Hanley. Hanley looks inside. It's going to be a trip, an inadvertent uh, trip. Got their feet tangled up there as Daly gets her first foul. Emily. Mella, uh, yeah. McMahon comes into the game. Dobbins with that ball. Daniel Gribble takes off, and Amy Poole with a 12-footer off the glass, no good. Tracked down by Dobbins. Dobbins back out to Emily McMahon. McMahon dribble across the floor. 54 seconds to go. Scores is 59 or 49-15, and it's going to be a walk by Amy Poole, and that's going to be. Olivia Burkett, number 13, comes in the game for Punksy. Actually, she's wearing number 12 tonight. And I didn't see who made that shot. And it's going to be a timeout by Carn City. I'll look across the way there and see if I can see. We'll just stay here as I have a quick timeout. Not sure who made that last shot. I was looking down at my scorebook, writing some names down, so I keep track of who is in for these teams, and I missed that. My bad there, so. Score does sit 49-17 with 21 seconds to go. Let's see, uh, Corn City has girls over in, in, in warm-ups. I know they took part in warm-ups. Dobbins flies down the floor, 18 seconds to go. Lobs it, oh. Good try there by Punksy to get that ball in there. And uh, that ball missed and grabbed by Olivia Burkett. Burkett flying down the floor. And that girl <laughs> pushed her from behind, didn't get called for it. Hanley puts it up and is going to be fouled with no time on the clock. And they're not going to let her shoot the shots. That's going to be it. Scores 49 to 17 in favor of Punksy. We'll add up some totals and we'll be back for the recap after this you're listening to a punksy high school sports playoff night on fox sports 100.9 Bar matey, what kind of fancy treasure chest be this? What? Oh, this is not a treasure chest. This is an ATM machine. I can access my money here or at any other ATM across the world with my in-first bank card. Yeah, 